What's up guys? Today I want to tell you about um, personal life experience that I had pretty recently. It's actually a couple of months back. Um, me and my wife, we, attempt, we, ah, we attended a timeshare presentation. Now if you're not sure of what a uh, timeshare presentation is, um, they do a very fantastic and realistic depiction of it in a South Park episode, uh, I think the title of it is The Alps. So the kids go skiing, and in order for the kids to be able to ski, the parents all have to attend a timeshare presentation. And throughout the whole episode, the parents are held hostage, essentially, by these timeshare people. Now, you know, it's a, it's a marvelous piece of satire, as is most of South Park. But at the same time, there's plenty of elements that ring very true to <laughs> exactly what we experience. Now, yeah, let me tell you about it. All right, so a couple of months back, um, for our one-year wedding anniversary, me and my wife ended up going to Las Vegas, which was a lot of fun. We were gonna we were gonna gamble, we were gonna hit the strip, see some shows, you know, do whatever. People actually end up doing in Vegas. Um, yeah, it was it was it was fun. Anyways, so we get into the our our flight gets into the airport uh, late at night. We find our hotel, end up going to sleep, wake up, and we're like, we're gonna spend the whole day walking the strip, and then the rest of the night we're gonna spend gambling. That was that was the original plan. So we're uh, we get up, we go to the strip, we're walking around, we're walking down the street for less than 10 minutes and uh, this guy comes up to us trying to hand us a piece of paper or whatever and we're like oh no 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 we don't we don't we don't care about anything he's like well uh, it's a new promotion or something like that and then he's he starts offering us um, you know a, a gift card and we're like okay um, we're listening he's like yeah, I was just wondering if you guys wanted a fifty dollars gift card, and obviously free money. So we're like, oh, okay, sounds interesting enough. And then as soon as we said that, another guy ran up, um, and he was much more of a smooth uh, and more professional looking. So the first guy kind of looked, uh, he was all decked out in kind of street gear. So um, yeah, like completely. Uh, no alarms raised, just this guy giving us a piece of paper, asking us if we wanted a $50 gift card. This next guy uh, that ran up and capitalized on that moment was uh, wearing a button-up shirt, nice pair of slacks, and he just reeked of salesperson. Um, everything about him, you could tell he'd been doing this for a very long time. His pitch was uh, memorized and delivered absolutely flawlessly. And um, so I, I recently started doing sales, and it, looking back on it now, I can see how fucking stupid I was to not immediately pick up what he was trying to do. But anyways, back to how stupid and gullible we were to actually attend this timeshare presentation. So uh, he already was like, so uh, are you guys, so um, what, are you, what are you guys doing here? It looks like uh, you're, you guys are together, and we're like, oh yeah, we are together, we're spending our one-year anniversary here. And he's like, oh, cool, yeah, everyone comes to a, a lot of people, or a lot of people come to Vegas for their one-year anniversary. Um, it's a great place to be. Uh, let me ask you guys, do you, do you guys gamble? And I'm like, well, we never really have, but we're planning on doing it. And he was like, oh, well, excellent. You guys are, uh, one of the things that we're giving away is these, these gambling credits. And uh, I was like, what, what do you mean giving away? And he was like, well, we're uh, we're trying to get more a little bit more traffic to a casino on the outskirts of town, and I was like, okay. And uh, he's like, yeah. So uh, let's do, let's do three hundred dollars of gambling gambling credits. And I was like, yeah, that that sounds awesome. And he's writing really fast on this piece of paper, and he's asking us all these questions like rapid fire. He's uh he's like, how long have you guys been together? Okay. Uh, where are you guys staying? Oh, okay. Uh, how long are you guys going to be here? Oh, okay. And then he starts asking us a little bit more about what we're going to be doing for the rest of the day. 
and he's trying to make sure that we have uh, the rest of the day free. And because we're fucking idiots, like I told you about earlier, we're like, oh yeah, we didn't have anything planned for the rest of the day. Sure, what, what, why? And he's like, oh, well, it's just a quick two-hour uh, presentation. We're trying to get people to this casino on the outskirts of town. Like I said, it's a $4.5 billion project that we recently um, that we recently built that's actually struggling to to bring in visitors and to get guests and stuff like that. And we're like, oh, okay, well... Uh, that sounds, that sounds like, sure, fine, whatever. And he's telling us, um, yeah, so it's, it's going to be two hours. And uh, what we're doing is having, um, we're just having a, a shuttle full of people go out there right now. So uh, by the time I was done talking to him, I realized that he kind of led me around the corner where uh, there was a bunch of other extremely touristy uh, looking people just kind of with a confused look on their face, the exact same look I had on my face. And uh, yeah, so they're writing our names down, getting a little bit more information about us. And all of a sudden they tell us uh, that in order to qualify for this, um, the gambling credits and everything that we were promised, because they'd given us a piece of paper with the things that we were going to be getting for free after attending the timeshare presentation, um, so it was itemized. Uh, we had to pay $20, which would be refunded to us at the end of the, re the presentation. We had to pay the $20, and um, that was to make sure that we weren't just using the shuttle to get to the end of uh, Vegas without uh, planning on visiting the timeshare presentation and coming back. So I repeatedly asked, um, so this money is going to be refunded? Yes, yes, it's, it's all signed, it's all in this, uh, this written contract that the guy writ up that as long as we attend this two-hour presentation, then um, we get our money back, we get all our stuff. Sounds great. Excellent. Onward. So we're on the bus. Um, everyone's talking about, wow, I hope this isn't a scam. I hope we don't get carted off and killed in the desert. And, uh, you know, there's a, there's a couple on the bus that just said, uh, oh, we've been to... We've been to these before. We actually really enjoy doing them. So these people actually go from city to city and attend timeshare presentations just to get some free shit out of it. And uh, they're giving everyone a pep talk because I'm sure you know that 99% of people that go to timeshare presentations uh, don't actually have an interest in the timeshare. And uh, a little bit more on that statistic later. But, uh, so yeah, we get there eventually, um, and there was free food, fantastic. There was uh, catering by Jimmy John's in this giant room with tons and tons of salespeople talking to, um, I guess, potential clientele. So me and my uh, wife end up sitting down at one of the tables. I get a massive plate of free sandwiches because I'm trying to capitalize on whatever free shit that I can milk out of this. And uh, sure enough, I eat absolutely as much food as I can. And uh, th that's one of the things, <laughs> that's one of the first things that the, uh, the first salesperson that we end up talking to notices. She's like, oh wow, you really loaded up on the free food. And I'm like, yep, absolutely. I'm, uh, I'm starving. You know, the food was advertised as free, so I'm going to town. She's like, oh yeah, yeah, have, help yourself, have as much as you want big red flag. She was just fine with me doing whatever. But anyways, so we get off to a decent start. Uh, she's, she's nice enough. She shows us around the, uh, the casino, shows us a couple of rooms, and I'm looking, at my, uh, I'm looking at my watch. We were waiting for her to talk to us for about 20 minutes or so, which is a uh, common sales tactic, is to actually keep the person waiting so that you have a little bit more power in the in the conversation later. But um, yeah, so we're walking around, she's showing us all the stuff, and shows us this giant casino with everything involved. So it was a $4.5 million, or $4.5 billion contract, remember that. So inside of this casino, they have movie theater, they have a bowling alley, they have horse fucking racing, it's nuts. And there's more slot machines and poker tables and uh, 
craps and roulette than you can even fathom. There's like miles of uh, machines just blinking and their lights are all going off and there's just a bunch of zombies that are pulling on the fucking slots levers. It's, it's fantastic. It's a beautiful sight. So then she eventually shows us some of the, uh, uh, the rooms that are available at the casino and we end up talking to one of the people that's ended up renting from them. And uh, the people that ended up renting from them have nothing but good things to say. They're like, oh yeah, this was one of the best decisions we've ever made. It's extremely affordable. Uh, you know, yada, 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 sunk cost fallacy, essentially. But um, yeah, so yeah, this meeting with the very first saleswoman, she's incredibly personable. She's very nice. We talk about tons of different things and it goes great. We're like, this woman's great. And then uh, when we sit back at the table, she, we start the, the discussions about how much it's going to cost. And this is, this is where it gets kind of funny. So my, uh, my strategy going into this was to just constantly say, oh no, that's too expensive. And maybe they'll leave me alone eventually. And then I get to leave with, my, uh, with all my gifts, which is the reason I'm here, right? Bad and free, but sure. But um, yeah, so starts off where our $24,000 for 60 days out of the year, any number of uh, hotels that I want to choose from, any country, whatever. It's a pretty sweet sounding deal. Great. But uh, no, all I say is nope, too expensive. Can't do it. Immediately, we go from $24,000, we're at $18,000. Very same deal. Nothing has changed. I'm blown away. I think, how low can I get this? And what changes will happen? So I have a little bit of fun with it in my head by saying, saying over and over again, oh no, can't afford that. Definitely can't afford that. Can't afford that. Can't afford that. And then by the end of this presentation, we are down to $2,400. Um, I think it's a year. And uh, I don't know, the numbers had changed a little bit. So it, it started off at 60 days, um, but it, it had dwindled down to like, I don't know, seven or eight guaranteed days at any of their locations for $2,400. But then on top of that, there's a bunch of hidden fees. So if you're actually trying to rent the room, it's like, I don't know, 80 bucks a night or some shit. Anyways, so that's where we were leaving off with the, uh, with the very first salesperson. And... <laughs> This is, this is where it gets kind of funny, because these are, uh, these are very, very good people at their job. So, um, as we keep saying, it's too expensive, it's too expensive, it's too expensive, she starts to kind of bring up that her manager is a little bit mad at her, and that her manager is going to come over here and see if they can work something out that would more financially suit us, and at that point I realized, oh shit, uh, this strategy is not going to work, they're just going to keep going until the end of time. But I have never been to a timeshare before, so I don't want to disqualify myself from um, being able to accept my gifts because I didn't use the internet and look up what you're supposed to fucking do in a timeshare presentation, which is start your clock at two hours. As soon as the person talks to you, you show them the clock at two hours and you say, in two hours, I am getting my shit. And you sign the contract. I sign the contract. We are both, uh, you know, legally tied to this contract. So... I'm not going to buy from you. If you want to waste two hours of my time, go for it. You want to waste two hours of your time? Knock yourself out. Anyways, that's what you're supposed to do. But like I keep referencing, I'm a fucking idiot. So, um, I keep saying, nope, nope, too expensive because I'm stupid. And uh, eventually, you know, this manager that she was very afraid of ends up coming over. Manager says, um... Is there, is there a problem over here? And we're like, nope, nope, absolutely not. And uh, she's like, oh, is an uh, employee uh, over here doing a good job? Did she show you around the facility? I'm like, oh, yeah, she's doing great. She's actually a very wonderful lady. And, and manager's just like, okay, well, what's wrong here? And we're like, uh, well, nothing's really wrong. We just can't afford it, and we're not really looking to do it. And then we go through a whole spiel with her, and then... By the end of the spiel, she ends up saying something like something along the lines of that she's really hinting that um, this is one of the um, 
let's just say the woman that the first woman we talked to, the saleswoman, let's call her M. This is um, this is M's first, or this is M's last chance, essentially at the company. If uh, if she doesn't make this sale, she's going to be in trouble. Maybe she's going to get fired. She doesn't say those words exactly, but she kind of alludes to them, right? Okay. So, anyways, um, yeah. So the, <laughs> right off the bat, she's she's telling us that if we don't by this timeshare, we are getting someone fired because they're not doing their job properly. Great. That's a sleazy sales tactic. Fine. I respect that. Great. Whatever. And then, as we're, st we're still talking to the manager, what ends up happening is she starts talking about these weird fucking statistics. So she pulls up out of nowhere after she figures out that me and my wife are there for our first year anniversary, right? She's like, um, did you know that in Britain... There is like 40% less divorce in uh, over in Britain. Yeah, did you know there's 40% less divorces over there? And this is this is out of nowhere, and it's pretty just it's like a fucking shot in the dark. She's just spitballing here, and and then she goes, "Do you know why uh, they have 40% less divorce?" And my wife. She, this is this is her time to shine. She's absolutely amazing here. She just deadpans and she goes, "You're gonna tell us it's because they have more vacations, aren't you?" <laughs> and uh, the fucking manager doesn't even realize that she's being mocked at this point. And she's like, "Yeah, it is because they have more vacations." And um, you know, I would hate to see if uh, something were to happen to you guys because. <laughs> You didn't take more vacations. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> she just kind of said that um, me and my wife would get divorced if we didn't get this timeshare. I respect that. Yet again, a little bit of a sleazy sales tactic. But this manager has not only kind of threatened to fire one of her employees, she's told me that me and my wife would get divorced if we didn't buy this stupid fucking timeshare. So, we get a little bit offended and... You know, I'm still not trying to blow this opportunity to get the gambling credits. Oh my god! And then uh, the manager ends up leaving because we keep saying we're not doing, we're not looking to do it right now. We changed our tactics. We've gone away from this is too expensive to we're not trying to do it. And <laughs> this point, we're just sitting there awkwardly with uh, with M, right? And M just after two minutes of awkward silence turns to us. And she starts telling us this story about uh, her family. And she's like, uh, oh, yeah, I have two to three children. What did she say? Fucking, ow. She said uh, she has three children. Yeah, that's right. Three children. She told us their ages. And then she told us that uh, she was a single mother. And I was like, okay, this story is out of nowhere as well. <laughs> and then she told me, or she told us that um, when she was 14... She ended up running away with with a uh, with a 16 year old boy that she was madly in love with. Uh, they ended up leaving home together. They ran away, and uh, they loved each other very much. Uh, ended up getting married down the road, and they never really went back to their families. Um, okay, fine. And then she tells me that you know, 10, 15 years after uh, they'd no, hold on, hold on. No, 20 years, yeah. 20 years after they'd run away together, that um, <laughs> one day, her husband of the time, this, this single mother, um, her husband ended up going to a routine trip to the grocery store. And when he was on his way to the grocery store, he ended up getting in a car accident and dying. Right? That's awful. That's just the worst thing ever. So our natural reaction, me and my wife, we were like, oh, yeah, I'm so sorry. My condolences. That's, that's terrible. She doesn't miss a beat, and she goes, you know what our number one regret was? That we didn't take more vacations together. <laughs> and I shit you not, this story is 100% true. This woman just pulled out this sob story out of her ass about her fucking husband dying on the way to the grocery store and their one regret in life 
Their one regret in life is that they didn't take any enough vacations together. Fucking wonderful, right? Jesus Christ. So this is the, uh, the caliber of sales tactics that you can expect to see if you end up going to a timeshare, which is why it's so fucking fun. <laughs> First and foremost, uh, they will attack your relationship. Uh, they will mercilessly uh, attack your ability to um, provide for your family. So every time I said, that's too expensive, not only would they lower the price, but they'd say, you can probably afford it. What, what you don't work hard enough? Some, some shit like that. It's, it was amazing to just see in, in real life. It was just phenomenal. I, I, I can't even fucking believe it. It's just ridiculous. But um, yeah, so we got her attacking our relationship, her attacking my ability to provide, slash my wife's ability to uh, provide or bring things to the table. <laughs> and uh shit so then um they tried to prey on our empathy by letting us know that if we didn't buy this timeshare this person was going to be fired and then they tried to play on our empathy again by saying um that if one of us is to die we'll probably regret not going on enough vacations or some shit together Fine, whatever. Respectable ta sales tactics all the way. Um, I'm pretty sure that uh, any, any other salesman I've ever talked to has never really gone that far. They've never taken that route. And, you know, there's, there's plenty more that you could end up doing taking that route. What's, what's to stop you from just threatening to murder me if I don't, <laughs> if I don't get the the timeshare, but under the guise of, of, of something completely ridiculous. You know, you could kind of hint at it. You know, like what the Mafia used to do. But it was like, it was like Mafia tactics, but they were really uh, designated to just cripple my emotions and my um, pretty much common sense. Any, anything like that. It was, it was an all-out attack. It, it was amazing. So anyways, after that point, we talked to two to three more salespeople and what they ended up doing was, um, you know, higher and higher pressure sales, just kind of writing numbers down on a contract and pushing it towards us, trying to get us to sign. No, fuck it. Uh, ended up not, nothing really cool happened with them. And uh, so we're, we're through the ringer, essentially. And after this, we get our stuff, we get our $300 vouchers, we get our uh, $50 gift card, and then we end up getting our... Um, what the fuck else do we get? $300. Oh, no, that's all we ended up getting because we were like, oh, $300, $350 in the end? Oh, this sounds fantastic, right? So, anyways, looking back at that one statistic, you know how I told you 99% of people don't um, want anything when they at attend a timeshare presentation? That's true if you talk to anyone that's done it, but... Uh, the amazing thing is, here's the fucking amazing thing is, I talked to, uh, I talked to M, and I was asking her like in in one of a, a lull in one of her fucking sob stories or some shit, how often does someone actually buy something? Because at this point, it was already established that we weren't getting anything, and she told me that 33 percent of people that come through that door end up buying something. Isn't that fucking nuts? 33 fucking percent ended up buying something out of it. People that just thought that they could say no, thought that they could just get some gambling credits or tickets to a show or some shit. They end up leaving with a lifelong commitment to something that they don't fucking want. That's how powerful those sales tactics are. And if you've never been to a timeshare, by God, fucking go. They're fucking incredible. And here's, here's the best part about the story. You know how I told you it was, uh, we'd get our money back for the, uh, the fare, and we'd also get that $50 uh, American Express gift card, as well as the $300 gambling credits? Yeah, we got all that shit. Um, so the $300 gambling credits, when I ended up asking about them, the, <laughs> the casino people told me that it was for a promotional machine at a certain casino. So um, we were at, we were ended up 
by that casino later in the night anyways. So we went to the casino and we were like, okay, we're trying to cash in these, these credits <laughs> at, the, at the help desk. And they point to a row of three machines that just look like children's machines. And they say, those credits only work in those three machines. I'm like, okay, fucking great. What the fuck? All right, I'm going to go win some money. I'm just going to go do some max bets. Maybe, maybe the sun will fucking shine. Maybe I'll be blessed with making actual money out of this fucking travesty. And uh, here's the thing. I got a jackpot on my, like, tenth or so spin. And what happened was no money came out. I got all the, uh, all the sevens lined up, and no fucking money came out. Instead, it said 5,000 points. And I was like, what the fuck? This is, this is 5,000 points. I want money. Just, I did a max bet. I want money. And then I'm, uh, if you read on most of the slot machines, it'll tell you what each um, combination is actually worth in terms of uh, the multiple. And <laughs> on this machine, it says anything under 25,000 points is worth nothing. Nothing. So in order for you to make any money, you have to get five jackpots. And here's the thing as well. If you don't get a jackpot, or if you don't get any points, so if you pull a losing spin, then, then you go back to zero. So in order to win the ultimate jackpot, which is 25,000 points, and let me, let me tell you this, a hundred dollars, you have to get five fucking jackpots in a row. And uh, that, <laughs> that's it. That is, it didn't happen for me. I ended up losing all of the fucking gambling credits and not making any money. And uh, then we, we kind of uh, pondered back in the day how much time we spent doing this whole transaction between both shuttle there and back how much time we spent talking to people. Uh, it was about five hours. So, let's say five hours per me and my wife. So let's say ten man hours. And all we ended up with from that fucking piece of shit timeshare presentation was a $50 American Express gift card. So if you look at our hourly rate in terms of being emotionally fucked with and Adding, having these high-pressure sales shoved down our throats. Uh, let's see. So we got that $50 American Express gift card. Each of us were at $5 a fucking hour. <laughs> we got paid $5 a fucking hour to waste our goddamn first day in Vegas and just have a bitter attitude towards the rest of the trip. And that's why I'm telling you, yet again, if you've never been to a timeshare presentation, go. They're fucking awesome. If you have any sort of interest in sales, this is the place to watch the tactics come out. High pressure, sales you're not even fucking ready for. And here's the, the craziest thing is, I now realize that looking back on it, is they picked M based off of how we looked, our age, how content we were with each other what we were planning on doing in the, in the city at the time. They handpicked the fucking salesperson that would fit our personality. Do you know how fucking violating it feels to just be completely categorized and just manipulated that much? It's absurd. So fucking do it. It's awesome. All right, guys. Uh, that's going to be it. That's my timeshare experience story. I know it's long as... Shit, but if you listen to the whole thing, thank you so much. All right, peace.